Thank you. I will uh, <clears throat> try uh, briefly, actually, to tell you a little bit about what I do, like my adventure in archaeology. Okay. And uh, okay. I will tell you also about some of the discoveries, some of the major discoveries that I made in my career. You know, I have been excavating in Egypt for the last, uh, say, 30 years. And I made many important discoveries. But the most important discovery is this discovery that locate on the shadow of the pyramids, the tombs of the pyramid builders. This discovery was very important because it tells us that the builders of the pyramids were Egyptians and also the builders of the pyramids were not slaves. Because if they were slaves, they will never be buried beside the pyramid. And we can see that the lower symmetry is for the workmen who moved the stones and the upper symmetry is for the technicians. The, in this tomb, we found many interesting things. Like in front of us, you know, the workmen used to protect their tombs. You know, we hear about the curse of the pharaohs and we hear about people die from the curse. And that is an inscription. If you can see in your right hand, you can see at the left, at the, left, the, the right, they say, if anyone will touch my tomb, he will be eaten by crocodile, the hippo and the lion. Then they really showed to us this. But what's interesting, that the wife of this man showed in the other side the same inscription. And uh, she did add more, and the scorpion and the snakes will eat you. This is a tomb of a workman that I found in my excavations. And that is uh, another, uh, the latest tomb that I found. It's for someone who actually was the overseer of the workmen. And inside this tomb, I found the oldest intact sarcophagus ever found in Egypt. Can you imagine, if you look at the sarcophagus behind me, it is completely sealed, never opened since 4,500 years ago. That is a moment in the life of an archaeologist is very important. The moment when you open a sealed sarcophagus and you look what is inside. When I opened the lid of the sarcophagus out, I found uh, only uh, a skeleton. I did not find the mummy. We also are excavating with a friend of mine He's from the, uh, he's from the uh, University of Chicago. He's working near me. And they found also near the tombs of the pyramid builders, they found uh, many interesting stuff like the bakery for making bread because the workmen had to eat bread. And also in the same time, we found also, uh, look, this is the galleries that the workmen sleep in it. And uh, we found near them evidence that they slaughter, uh, the ancient, the pharaohs, slaughter every day 11 cows and 33 goats. And this can feed about 10,000 workmen a day. And this is, I believe, the number of the workmen who actually were involved in building the pyramid. Because, you know, the pyramid was the national project of the whole nation. Every household in the north and south used to participate in building the pyramid by sending workforce or food to help the king. You know, the second important discovery that I will tell you briefly about it, in front of you now, I'm excavating a mummy. This is the Valley of the Golden Mummies that I discovered. This valley is located about 225 miles southwest of Cairo, where I found over 250 mummies. Most of the mummies were covered with gold, like this. You can see the face looks very realistic. The mummies were covered with gold because the people were rich. They were producing wine and they sell this wine all over Egypt. 
And also this is a small oasis that it is beautiful place. But this excavation or this discovery happened by accident. When the uh, guard of the temple nearby was riding his donkey in the desert, by accident, the donkey fell in a hole. And that when I came with my team, the young archaeologist, if you really want one day to excavate, you should come and join me. Because this excavation that I did in the Valley of the Golden Mummy is proved to be very important. Look at this mummy. Look at the face. It's covered with gold. The chest is covered with cartonnage and has beautiful scenes of the gods of the ancient Egypt of mummification and the judgment hall. They put scenes of uh, the God of Wisdom and look at the face. They had the royal symbols on the forehead. Also, we, we look at the way, we, this is a tomb that we found recently. In one tomb, we found about 43 mummies. And some of the mummies were not covered with gold, but they were actually uh, covered with linen only. And uh, we did excavate more near the valley and this underneath of the houses where I made a major important discovery. When I went underneath the houses to excavate, I found a maze corridor of tombs. In one of them, look at this. This, I discovered this when I entered inside. The lid is made of limestone. The weight of this lid is about 22 tons. And the hieroglyphic inscription on the chest is say that this man, his name was Jed, Jed Khenso. And he was a, the priest of Isis and Osiris. Isis married Osiris. Osiris was the good God. And therefore, I will have to tell you that the five hours that I spent to try to open this sarcophagus are the best five hours in my life. Now I'm taking you with me to see how an archaeologist discovered tombs. These two people in front of me are expertise. They understand how to open a huge sarcophagus. Actually, that I will show you what do we do after we discuss how we'll do it. Look what I did. We found underneath, we discovered gold amulets were completely covered, the mummies. Now, I come to tell you another important discovery that I made. Look in front of you. This is a small door with two copper handles that I found inside the Great Pyramid of Khufu. When this door has been found, Everyone asked me, what is behind this door? Until actually I became an explorer to the National Geographic and we decided to investigate this door. And that is a scene with Laura Green when we did make this program live. We made everyone to know what is behind this door. And we sent a robot and we opened in the door about one centimeter a hole at 4.50 in the morning in front of everyone all over the world. We sent the camera and we found behind it a second door. That became very mystery. Why all these doors in the pyramids? This is the robot that we actually used to try to find out what is behind this door. In this coming October, I'm going to find out uh, actually, because we are going to design a robot. It's already designed by Singapore University that we will go through these doors and try because we found a third door. This is a third door that we discovered in the pyramid. But I do believe that all these doors are hiding the secret uh, tomb of Cheops, the builder of the Great Pyramid. Finally, I would like to talk to you about this golden king, Tut Anch Amun, as we call him King Tut. You know, last month, 
in February 5th, I went to the Valley of the Kings with a team of Egyptian archaeologists. And we tried to examine the mummy of Tutankhamun, this young man who ruled Egypt in the age of nine. I came to the tomb in the evening. I took the lid of the sarcophagus out and I began to look for the mummy. That is the time when I actually saw the mummy of Tut An Khamun. This mummy is in a bad condition because Howard Carter, when he opened this tomb in November 11, in 1925, he found out actually that the golden mask of the king was tied with the chest. It weighed about three pounds, about one kilo. He brought tools with fire and he took the mask out, he damaged the mummy. But that's when I moved the mummy to the CT scan. And that is the mummy under the machine to discover for the first time the inside of King Tut. We will know from the CT scanning in March 5th, next month, we'll announce because there is a team of radiologists are examining the mummy. We try for the first time to actually to know how King Tut died. People say he died normally. People say he was murdered. People say he was he fell down from a child. People say that he died in the age of 17 or 20 or 25. Then in beginning of March, we'll actually announce to the whole world the, who murdered King Tut. And if we this, and if we if we know that he was murdered, we have to look for the suspects. That's really was exciting about archaeology. But the most exciting is this really the CT scan to go inside King Tut. Next month I can show to all of you how King Tut looked like for the first time. How really he looks like. We can see him as a human being. We can understand about his life. We can know about his marriage, his love, when he became a king and how he died. That's what we call the inside of Tutankhamun. You know, we discovered until now about 30% of our monument. We still have about 70% is buried underneath the ground. I tell everyone when I lecture everywhere, you never know what the sand of Egypt may hide of secrets. And thank you. I'm an archaeology <laughs> professor at Simon Fraser University. Um, I like this. <laughs> so do we. <laughs> I think you've really inspired a lot of the students here. So you may have some budding Egyptologists. I don't know. Good. I will hire them. <laughs> well, that's my question. I, I was wondering what the priorities are of the Supreme Council of Activities, what kind of project they want so that uh, the students can prepare for such a career. You know, I, for, for a student really to be an archaeologist, I think he should have the passion of it. You know, when I was in their age, I was young. I wanted to be a lawyer. And I went to faculty of law. I bought books. I did not like it. By accident, I went to faculty of archaeology. I did not like it also. I did not like studying it. But when I went for the first time to excavate in a site and discover the tomb, inside the tomb there was a statue, I said, when I was brushing and cleaning the statue, I said, I found my love. And my love was archaeology. Then I want this young people, if really they want to be an archaeologist, they have to have the passion. They have to search inside to find out their passion. If archaeology is their passion, they should do it. And they should write to me. And I will tell them how they can become an archaeologist. By the way, I need them to go to my website. Did they already go? Or do, you, do you know my website already or not? I, I do. I can send it to them. Okay. Just tell them about that. Then they can learn a little bit about archaeology. That's great. We're very happy that you didn't become a lawyer. <laughs>
I have a feeling that he was not murdered. Yeah. I don't know why. Yes. And I will know, you know, in a few days. Yeah. I mean, next beginning of next month, you will see me in a press conference in front of all the media from all over the world. We will say the truth. Then don't rush. Just wait. Okay. Like, like less than how many? Like less than 10 days or 15 days. We'll actually we will know yeah. the age of his death. And we will have a reconstruction of his face. You will see actually his face. You, you mean the shape of the pyramid? Yeah. You, in the, okay. You know, it is, it has a religious meaning. Because the ancient Egyptian found that the universal God of Egypt created the world through a mound. That mound became the pyramid after that. <clears throat> when the ancient Egyptians would write hieroglyphics, they write the title of the man, his name, his jobs that we had. I just went to today to uh, the site of Saqqara, and we just found a tomb. The man inside the tomb wrote his name in hieroglyphic. He was name, his name was Meri, mean the beloved one. And his job was the overseer of the four sacred boats. Then inside the tomb hieroglyphic, explain his daily life. Explain the life of the deceased. And write to us about names of offerings and things like that. Then the hieroglyphic language was not a spoken language. The, the, what the spoken script was called demotic and hieratic. The script was for writing. And therefore, inside the tomb, all this hieroglyphic, it tells us about the daily life and the religious belief of the ancient Egyptians. Only thing that you can find in Mars, that my name was written in a CD and a throne in Mars, <laughs> but there is no relationship at all. There is no pyramids on Mars. This is a speculation completely. And all what you hear about pyramids on Mars, it is a speculation. No evidence has been discovered until now to tell us about the discovery of any evidence on Mars. And there is no relationship between the Egyptian pyramids and even the Mexican pyramids and the pyramids in South America at all. Are going to do this soon. Uh, I would like to build a replica for the tomb of King Tut and the tomb of Seti I and Nefertari because those are the most beautiful tombs. But we, I think, in this coming two years, we need to do replicas. And tourists can visit the replica and we can save the original tombs. I have a book written for uh, children from the age of 10 to 16 it's called The Curse of the Furs. I will tell you, you know, the word curse, it was occurred when Howard, Howard Carter found the tomb of King Tut. And Lord Carnarvon died. They said he was beaten by a mosquito. I really do not believe in the curse. I have been excavating for the last 30 years. And uh, when I discover a tomb, you know, if you close a room for 3,000 years, the room will have mummy, and this mummy will have germs. If you come directly to the room, the germs can hit you, you die. But when I excavate now, I open the tomb for two days until the bad air will go out and the fresh air will go in. And I never shave, because when I shave, it's open here. And therefore, uh, what after? Oh, okay. And therefore, uh, nothing really can happen to me. But I was excavating in Bahari under the ground, and I found I was holding a lamp in my hand. I hold the lamp a little bit, then the lamp, the electricity hit me. I fainted for half a minute. I t when I wake up, I told the people, if I died, people will believe in the curse of the first. But I will tell you three things happened to me in January 5, 2005. When I went to do the scanning of King Tut, 
when I was giving an interview in the Valley of the Kings, it had a storm and raining. It never rained in this place. When I put the mummy under the CT scan, the machine was stopped for one, one hour. And people are talking now in Egypt about the curse of the pharaohs, how the curse is running after me, and King Tut's taking the revenge from me. But I do not believe on the curse. That is really the appearance of the Sphinx. The Sphinx has a face of a king and a body of a loin. And therefore, you know, people has been talking about things underneath the Sphinx, has been excavating under the Sphinx. I found many tunnels inside. One of them goes for about 35 feet inside the Sphinx body. All what you hear from non-scientific point of view is really not true. The Sphinx is a face of a king, a body of a loin to show the power of the king. And it is an image of the builder of the second pyramid at Giza. You know, the, the people were really like us. The average age of death were 30 to 35 among the common people. The average height was five to six feet. There were people like me and you, but they believed in their God strongly. Then there were no giants. There were not anything like that. They, before pyramids, they built their tombs from mud brick. But it, the idea of building the tomb from a stone was developed in the time of Dynasty III by King Zoser, who is architect Imhotep for the first time. He changed it, building the tomb from mud brick to a limestone as a step pyramid. And after that, the idea developed the true pyramid. Then if really you read things about ancient Egypt, everything did not come suddenly. It came gradually step by step. Okay.